Maturity. Okay, who else? What is it talking about when it's talking about meat and milk? Anybody? Going once for fifty dollars? Going twice? You said fifty for twenty dollars? Oh wait, wait, wait! What's the question? <laughs> Going and it's gone. <laughs> yeah, these two. Anybody thirsty? Nobody? You want it? Come on. Yeah, come get it. Ugh. There you go, big dog. Nice to meet you, too. <laughs> that didn't go like I planned it. <laughs> huh? You actually can, sir. What's your name? Who? Armani Rodriguez. That sounds like a clothing line. You got your own brand? You should think about it. That's a dope name. Why'd you take that cup? Did you drink it out of it? Lord have mercy. Hey, we talked about this, didn't we? Why are you drinking out that cup, man? Why didn't you ask for the bottle? I will gladly take the bottle for him. I'll ask for you, it myself. You want the bottle? Yes, sir. <laughs> I am I'm up here. All right. Thank you so much. So, everybody, look at my man drinking out of the bottle. How does he look drinking out of that bottle? You, I hear weird. He I is hear living satisfied. His best life. I hear what else? Well, how does he look? That's like pineapple and something else. Right? How does he look drinking out of that cup? Huh? He's standing out from the norm. I heard weird. Why is it weird? It's a sippy cup. Because what? It's a sippy cup. It's a sippy cup, right? Let's go to the scripture. I want to make sure that I give you full, I want to build this foundation the right way. Let's go to Matthew 4, 3 through 4. Matthew 4, 3 through 4 in the New Living Translation. We could turn the smoke off behind me. That's too small. I can't see it. If we could put it on the screen. Matthew 4, 3 through 4. It says, During that time, the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No. The scriptures say, People do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So, when the Bible is talking about milk and meat, what is it referring to? Huh? The what? The what? The what? I said the what? Okay, let's, 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 let's make sure that they get it. When I say meat, you say word. Meat. Word. Meat. Word. When I say meat, you say word. Meat. Word. Meat. Word. When I say milk, you say word. Milk. Word. Milk. Word. Word. Milk. Just wanted to see how, you know, sharp y'all were. Now that we have that understanding, as far as man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I'm going to show you this illustration, and I want you to see something as we do this, okay? The issue why a lot of young people have been having frustrating times on this planet, in this world, is because, for one thing, the world is a battleground, not a playground. Let me say that again. The world is a battleground. Not a playground. Playgrounds are for what? Okay. So we have Serenity over here. She's raising her hand. When you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, 
This is you, right? This is your thinker, your feeler, your emotions. This is your physical body. What's the difference between the three? Hold up, she got a mic for you. Say it again. It's going from the youngest to the oldest, and I believe in the Bible they say that the younger you are, the more closer you are to God. So your body is actually like human, and you're more of an adult, which means that you create more sins than what a baby would be. Okay. Yeah, you're right. The Bible does say that. But let's... uh. Let me give it to you in a way everybody can understand it. Man is a spirit. spirit. You possess a soul and you live in a body. Okay, your spirit is who you are. Your soul is your thinker, your feeler, your emotions. It's where you're angry, it's where you're happy, it's where you're sad, it's where your emotions are. And then you have your body. Your body is the part that actually functions in this earth. It can touch, it can see, it can smell, it can feel. Right? But what happens is, how long have you been saved? How many years? 39 years. Five years. Blake, how long have you been saved? Ten years. Ten years. It's a long time. What about you, my man? Yeah. Huh? Nine years. Okay, great. Ten years. Ten years in the game. Five years in the game. Me, myself, personally, shoot. <laughs> As a 41-year-old male, you ask me how long, you be sa how long have you been saved, my response is going to be like, saved like for real or like when I went up to the altar and just said the words? Because there's a difference. You see... The reason why people have problems and have so much struggle, one is because the world is a battleground, not a playground. But two, when you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Brianna, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to get up and I want you to walk away from duty. You can act like you're leaving the building. Bye, Brianna. Everybody say, bye, Brianna. Bye, Brianna. Watch dude. Why did the kids laugh? <laughs> Watch. Bye. Y'all wave at her. Bye. He's like, but mother, what about us? <laughs> With chips and candy. He's about to come to tears. Why? He feels betrayed. He feels what? Betrayed. He feels betrayed, but ultimately, what does he want? He's like, I want my mother back. I want my mama back. So when the Bible says childlike faith, that's what it's talking about. There's a dependency that a son has on his mother. There's a dependency that a child has on their parent. So like right now, he has these lights in his face, and he's eating his candy, right? But he's squinting like, where my mama at? That's how we should be with God. That makes sense? Clap one time if that makes sense. You see, this little kid, see the baby, long as she held and secure, she good. But if you put her in the hands of a stranger, see, she know Auntie Constance. But if you put her in the hands of a stranger, she'll go to you. But she ain't going to really too much like it. She's going to be looking at people that she know like, is this person good? Like most babies do, right? Brianna, you can come on back, baby. I ain't want her to leave. Duty, you want your mama back? She said she's leaving. She'll be back later. She'll be back. You're going to spend the night here with us, okay? <laughs> you cool? She ain't going to come back, okay? Yeah, right. Come on back, <laughs> See, I know duty. So after about 15, 20 minutes, he like, I want my mama, I want my mama. 
And that's not a bad thing, that's a dependence thing. Who can tell me the difference between humility and pride? Too strong to admit defeat. Okay. okay. That's that's why I could put it. Blake, let's get the mic over here. And you guys could just stay up front so you can see who needs a mic better. Just stay up Pride. here, yeah. Pride would be trust and relying and depending on yourself. And uh -huh. then humility is trust and relying and depending on God. Perfect. Pride is trusting, relying, and depending on self. Humility is trusting, relying, and depending on God. These babies depend on their mother for what? Everything. She's their guide. She's their protector. She's their uh, comfort. She's their peace when something's wrong. She knows them better than they know them at this point. Is it safe to say that? A mother's love goes way deeper and, and, I, and I'm, I'm saying that because I was talking to Jalen yesterday we was talking about this yesterday but I feel like when it comes to family and friends you can't really go off of a person based off of their family because they share the same DNA they share the same looks they may look similar but they may act totally different they may have uh, certain uh, hereditary traits right like uh uh, you know, some family, you know, you could tell the Jackson family from their noses, right? Well, you could. You definitely could. It's like, oh man, you must be related to the Jacksons. Look at that nose. He got one of them Jackson noses, right? So you got that, but you can really tell who a person is based off of their friends. Who could tell me why? It's where the character derives from or comes say, from. Say that again, sweetie. It's where the character comes from. From their friends? Because they hang around them a lot, so they kind of pick up their characteristics and things like that. Okay. Because the people you hang around basically shows what type of person you are. When it comes to picking a friend, right? Usually, you pick friends that you see something about yourself in. Which means, um, uh, how can I say this? If you have a ratchet friend, but you're not ratchet, you're ratchet. <laughs> that makes sense? Because you chose this person knowing that they were ratchet and still chose for this ratchet person to be your friend. There was something about that person that drew you to them. Does that make sense? Pastor Ant, what does this mean? Well, I was having a conversation the other day and, you know, you get a lot of different frustrations that happen within the uh, institution of the family. You have a lot of frustration that happens within the institution of school when it comes to relationships, friendships, and different things like that. And I remember having a conversation with one of my kids as far as, you know, one of them said, Dad, sometimes I just need you to be my friend. And I had to explain to them, baby, I need you to understand that if you can embrace me as your father, then you'll quickly learn that the relationship from a parent standpoint goes way beyond and deeper than the relationship of a friend. Does that make sense? Talking about meat and milk. Nice restaurants, right? So I think I took Junior to Carabas. Me and Constance took him to Carabas, right? So we out at Carabas, Jay. And I'm like, hey, man, let's get some uh, calamari, man. You ever had calamari? Let's get some calamari. Well, what's that? It's like, uh, it's like uh, baby squid. Ew, I don't like that. So what does he look for when we go to Carabas? Who can tell Chicken me? tenders and classic burgers. I feel it. I totally understand it. How many of you would choose the same thing? Yes, sir. Why? 
Chicken tenders never fail. They, they're undefeated. It's, it's un you can't go wrong with it. But at what point do you try something new? <laughs> Ever? So let me, let me, let me okay, okay. I, I just want to make sure, just, for, just so I understand. I could take you to a, a restaurant where the plates are like $200 a plate, and you going to ask for a burger? I will ask for $200 chicken tenders and $200 burgers. Really? Yes. Now, when I was younger, I remember being that way, but then I was exposed to, you know, calamari. I was exposed to, uh, hey, why don't you try the red snapper? Red snapper? You're going to like it. Just, just taste it. Just taste it. I do this with Brisha all the time. Just taste it, because she got baby taste buds, right? I was like, just taste it. She's like, oh my God, oh my God, uncle. And then she tastes it. She knows it's good, but because she wants to continue on, she goes, it's nasty. You know it's good. What's the problem with that? Babies don't like trying new food. Pastor Ant, why are you talking about food? I'm not. You see, meat represents truth. Milk represents something that tickles your fancy. Something that makes you feel good. Something that, you know, if you're in a situation, uh, Blake, if you're in a situation where, you know, you've got this girl that you really like and that you really want to be with, right? And if I'm your dad, I come to you and I say, son, she's not the one. That's me. Do you want it? Why? Because you really feel in her and you really want to be with her. But when she got up to walk away, what did he do? Like, where you going? I, I, I need you. I need to hear what you have to say to me. I need what you got for me. Where's my protection going? Where's my peace going? Where's my guidance going? So here's the reason why young people face a lot of frustration in this battleground we call Earth. Physically, you're this age, but emotionally, you're this age. And then spiritually, you're still a baby. I know 41-year-old babies. You feel me? I know 17-year-old babies. Now, here's the problem. At 16, 17 years old, you start feeling that sense of independence, and you start feeling like you what? You're grown. What you start feeling like? You're grown. You start feeling like you're grown, don't you, Jay? Yup. Huh? What you, what you start feeling like you want to do now? Feel like I want to go out and go get some jobs and right. pay bills. And I shouldn't have to ask to go in the refrigerator no more. Yeah. Yeah, we passed I that. put my name on the juice now. Right. It's, it's my juice now. Right, it's my juice. Right? Okay. What, what else What else you feel like you could, I should be able to go? I can go out. I can and you go don't out. have to question me about it. Because I'm good. Yeah, point blank. I'm grown. Basically. But emotionally, spiritually, we ain't talk about that. In 2023, I declare and I decree that you guys start paying attention to the real you. Man is a spirit. You possess a soul and you live in a physical body. Man, I could wake up in the morning and I could put it on. I got my cologne, I got my oils, I got my boom, 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 put my shoes on, put my, yeah, this look good. But please believe I spent just as much time paying attention to my spirit part as well. My team is getting uh, text messages midnight, sometimes one o'clock in the morning. Hey, Holy Spirit just gave me this scripture. Hey, I want to change this scripture. I know I gave you this scripture, but I want to do this one, but I want to change the version. I don't want the New Living Translation. I want the easy read version. I'm constantly feeding that part of me because if I don't feed that part of me, then I'm going to begin to experience a high level of hell in this earth. And there's nothing more sad than a believer who's still fighting the same battle and never progressing on to the next thing. You've been saved 10 years. Are you still trying to learn how to forgive? You've been saved five years. Are you still trying to learn temperance? Are you still trying to learn patience? Or are you ready for the deeper? Are you ready for the wider? Are you ready for the things of God? Are you still on milk 
Well, who's Father Abraham? Well, Father Abraham had many sons. Had many sons, had father, that's milk. I can give you that. But aren't you ready for meat? You see, children's ministry gives you milk. Junior high, you start, you know, uh, what, 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 do you, what do you do when they go from the bottle, but you start putting the cereal in the bottle? Y'all, they still do that? Okay, yeah, yeah. So you start putting cereal in a bottle because it makes it a little thicker, right? And then you got to make the, 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 the hole in the nipple a little bigger so that they can get it and, you know, of course, make sure that you test it so it's not scalding hot and all those stuff. See, I remember from my babies. Anyway, but you do that because you're trying to wean them off of milk and get them prepared for, let me give baby girl a piece of this chicken finger. Let me give baby girl a piece of this uh, burger. Oh, she don't eat meat. I mean, uh, beef. But let me give her a piece of this chicken. Let me give her more solid food that'll help you grow. Everybody repeat after me. Say, man, man does, not live does not live off bread, off bread alone. alone. But by, but by every word, every word that comes out, comes out the mouth of God. The mouth of God. I need you to understand that, because your rate, your relationship with Jesus Christ in this year is going to be paramount. It's going to be necessary. It's going to be essential, because if you don't involve and include Him in the details of your day and the intricacies of your life then you're going to find yourself struggling in a lot of areas you are supposed to have been have graduated from. How many of you have ever known somebody that was kept back? She could, it's okay, she'd go to uh, Brescia. Matter of fact, give it here. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. I had to do Tay like this. Hey, baby. Come on. You want to preach with me? We good. Come on. You want some juice? She can't drink juice. She can't. That's a new bottle. Here. She ain't questioning it, is she? Is she questioning it? Like, what's that? She saw a bottle, she saw an opportunity to drink, and what did she do? Childlike faith. No questions. Just do. That's how you move with God. Okay? Everybody in here, I want to challenge you. You want some more? Everybody in here, I want to challenge you. I know we got the iPads and the iPhones. Raise your hand if you got the Bible app on your uh, phone. I want to challenge everybody in here to get a physical Bible. I do. And I'll be looking for it. How many of you own your own personal Bible? Raise your hand. When the last time you read it? I'm listening. What'd you say? What'd you say? What'd you say? What'd you say? What'd you say now? What'd you say? 2019. 2019. Because, you know, technology's good, but your battery runs out. Technology is good, but some places don't have Wi-Fi. And with as important as the word is, it's good to have a tangible Bible that you can turn the pages and, and, and feel the, the pages. And, and, and it's, just, it's just something about it. So I want to encourage and I want to challenge everybody in here. Get you a physical hard copy Bible that you use and that you make your own. Get you some highlighters. Because in this year, I declare and decree, young people will begin to study the word. Amen? Amen. So are you guys understand? You want to go to mommy? Come on. There she go. You want the juice? Huh? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You want this? By duty. Y'all make some noise for them. You want this one? Come on. I was going to say, yeah. I'll take that one too. You good? You can keep that bottle too, man. <laughs> there you go, man. All right, so does everybody understand the foundation? Can I get started? Clap one time if what I said so far makes sense. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this thing. Um, Matthew 18, 2 and 4, New Living Translation. Matthew 18, 2 and 4, New Living Translation. Hallelujah. It says, Jesus called the little child to him and put the child among them. Then he said, I tell you the truth. Unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom 
of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as the little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. It says, so anyone who becomes as what? What does humble mean? Trusting, relying, and depending on who? Jesus. On who? God. On who? Father. On who? God. On who? Messiah. When Brianna got up and walked away, what did duty but do? Cry. Where you going? Arms stretched out. I want you. We're in a season, and we've always been in this season, but now I'm shining a light on it, where you guys have to reach out constantly for Jesus. His voice is constantly being replaced by the voice of reason, by the voice of the things of this world, right? My, your personal desires. I really want to be with this person. Oh, that's moving me. And all of a sudden, you know, because uh, when you're a child, you know, you're, you, you, you want, you want, you want, uh, and you depend, you depend, you depend. But as you start getting older, you start feeling independent and you want to be independent of those things that you feel like you desire because you want to show that you're what? I'm grown. I'm maturing. I'm growing. But we're not just talking about growing physically. We're talking about growing emotionally. We're talking about growing spiritually. Because if these two aren't growing as well, then this part is going to experience a lot of trauma. Unnecessary trauma. Are you hearing me? Unnecessary trauma that's coming by way of desires. That's coming by way of people. That's coming by way of relationships. And I'm telling you, young people, it's time to grow up. Here's some questions that you should ask yourself. Are you on milk or are you on solid food? Milk representing the things you want to hear. Meat representing the things you need to hear. See the difference? Somebody could tell you what you want to hear all day but it not be what you need to hear. And be mindful of, uh, you know, I got this thing we used to call it back in my day, we used to call it yes man. I don't know what they call it now. They still call it that? Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, nobody wants a yes man. Well, guys, what do you think about this? I think it's good. Yes. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with it? Yes. <laughs> so there is something wrong with it? No. Everything's good with it? Yes. You sure? Yes. But I, I'm trying to get you to be an enemy to the plan. You don't see anything wrong with it? No. Who wants that? I hear people say, not me, but when you're in the thick of a battle or when you're in the middle of a fight, you just want it to stop. So you'll take anything at that point. I want to hear something that's going to make this just go away, which is why a lot of young people go to weed, they go to drugs, they go to pills. They go to alcohol, they go to these different things because I just want what I'm feeling right now to stop. Well, how do you know what you're feeling? Because I feel it, but the part of you that's feeling it is immature as well. And I'm telling you that when you start paying attention to the things of God and you start adding God into the equation and you start having that childlike faith, where you go, I go, what you say, I say, God, I you pray, I pray. Remember that? Remember that song? What no. you do, I do. Where you go, I go. God need to be your twin. Twin, what up, twin? What's going on with you, folk? For real, but I'm my mama, boy, for real. What we doing today? Lord, where you want to lead me today? I want you to go trial for basketball. I don't even like basketball, and I don't even think I'm going to make the team. I'm only 5'3". I'm going to look like a midget out there, bro, for real, I'm my mama. What you want me to do, twin? I want you to try out for the basketball team. And you have that childlike faith, and you say, okay, and you just go. All of a sudden, all of these doors start opening up for you. Or, twin, what we on today? Twin, what's up, twin? What we on today, twin? I want you to break up with old girl. <gasps> you say you want me to do what? I want you to break up with old girl. 
But twin, I can't, bro. That my love, my life. She gave me a promise ring, bro. It's for real. Twin, you already seen what she looked like. You know how she coming, bro. Like, I ain't like. <laughs> Indy. Milk or meat? You seeing the difference? Milk is what you want to hear. Meat is what you need to hear. I need to be able to go deeper in the word. I know about Father Abraham. I know about Isaac. I know about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And if you don't, it's okay. Start that process because it's time to grow up. You understand? Second question. How do I grow up? I'm glad you asked. It's very simple. And I made it into a simple equation. One, you study it. You study it. I want everybody in here to make sure that you have a physical Bible. You know, uh, try to get one that's parallel, which means they have the King James Version and the Amplified all in one Bible. Okay? So the first thing you do is you study it. Second thing you do is you meditate on it. And then the third thing you do is put it into daily practice. And what does that equal? The process of growing up. So it's on the screen. Take a picture of it. You study it. You meditate on it. And you put it into daily practice. Matter of fact, we're going to post that on our Instagram. Uh, Chaz, I don't know if, uh, what you I don't see it. But if you hear me, I want to make that look pretty and post it today so that the kids can go to our Instagram page and screenshot it. I need you to get it because that's how you grow up. That's the whole purpose for this message. You study it. You meditate on it. You put it in a daily practice. Now, what, what's going to happen is, as you're trying to put it in a daily practice, there's going to be things that distract you. There's going to be things that try to tempt you away from it. Every time you get a word, every time you come here and get a word, the enemy's job is to immediately discredit the word that you just got and get you focused back on the thing that you were focused on before this word was introduced to you. That's his job. That's what he's supposed to do. What's the job of a hater? To hate. So why do we get mad when haters hate? That's what they supposed to do. The devil is going devil. You understand? A hater is going what? Hate. But what makes you different? You're a believer. You're, you're a born again believer, right? You're a Christian. Why do we call you Christians? Because Christ is in you, right? So if Christ is in you, it should be a swag that you possess. It should be a, a confidence that they possess, Jay. And I think for me, it's, you know, the, the confidence ain't confident for me. It's like a facade almost. It's almost like I'm good depending on where I'm at instead of where I'm at being good because I'm there. Cracking under pressure. You feel what I'm saying? Basically. I've been telling my kids since they were born, change the atmosphere, don't let the atmosphere change you. Why? Because Christ is in you. When you go into a situation, the situation is supposed to change. The situation isn't supposed to change you. That's, you know, life 101. You understand what I'm saying? If you can go into an atmosphere and that atmosphere influences you to be something other than who God created you to be, something is wrong. What's wrong? The devil is having his way with you. You're a play toy. Having you convinced that this world is a playground instead of a battleground. So while you out here playing, life is really happening and you don't really feel it until you fall, you drop and you hurt yourself and now all of a sudden, you dig what I'm saying? I'm in pain. I'm frustrated. I'm aggravated. I'm hurt. My heart is broken. This girl broke my heart. This boy broke my heart. I loved him. I loved her. I put all my trust in her. I put all my trust in him. Well, what was the problem there? Where was your trust supposed to be? Just like with duty. When mama got up to walk away, the difference is God ain't walking away from you. He's going to stay right there where you are, right? He's going to stay right where you are 
But the things in this world are going to get louder and louder and louder. All of a sudden, fellas, you know, certain body parts of the female anatomy is going to become more visible to you. Ladies, certain, uh, certain attributes of the male anatomy is going to start sticking out more to you. But not even just that as far as attracted, there's going to be inner desires that are natural, that naturally happen. Every young lady in here wants to be desired. Every young man in here wants to be desired. I was at uh, my son's uh, basketball game last night. It was a rivalry game, so it was Noonan versus East Coweta. And at the game, it was packed, so we couldn't sit in our normal seat, so we had to sit with a lot of the, the young people. And as we sit in there, man, it's like, man, I felt like I was in high school again. I was telling my wife, because, you know, you got the kids that come in, you know, they got the twist in their hair. They, you know, they put it on when they go to a game, right? Y'all know y'all put it on when y'all go to a game, right? They put it on. So they coming up the bleachers, right? And they coming up, excuse me, shout excuse me, shout excuse me, shout excuse, excuse, excuse. What's up? Then they sit down, what's up, little mama, what's going on with you? Nothing, I'm chilling, what's going on with you? You know, and it seems innocent. It seems cool, and a lot of times it could be. Listen to me, I'm not saying you can't have fun. I'm not saying that you can't live life. I'm talking more so on how you live it. I'm not saying you can't, ladies, I'm not saying you can't talk to boys or be in relationships. I'm saying bring God into that relationship too, and it'll save you a lot of heartache and pain because you'll quickly realize, oh, he can't even have a conversation with me. And then some of you are still babies spiritually that there's certain conversations you can't even be a part of because you don't understand it. How many times have you been in a situation, and Jay, let me know, how many times have you been in a situation where you've seen somebody going through something and you wanted to say something to them but didn't have the words to articulate what to say all the time all the time yes and it's like dang what's that pastor aunt said or what's that dr dollar said or what's that my mama used to tell me because this kid is over here talking about suicide and I, I i know naturally i don't want them to to do that but what what do i say to them what can i say to them well, if you hadn't spent time developing your relationship with Christ, you're not going to know what to say. But he needs you to be his feet and hands in this earth. What's the sense of saying, man, I'm a born-again Christian? If you don't know, you don't even know what that means. You don't even know him. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger's voice they will not follow. But you're still trying to figure out, is my thoughts him? Is God speaking to me through Trey Trey? Is God speaking to me through this commercial on TV? All right, Lord, if you want me to do this, then give me a sign. What you looking for a sign for when you can hear his voice? You don't need no zodiac signs. Zodiac signs. So you say, Lord, if, if, if you want me to do this, give me a sign. And then you hear the door screech. And you be like, <gasps> you know you're home by yourself. No, you ain't. That, that wasn't the Lord. You scared now. <laughs> now you think somebody in the doggone house. I'm talking about a real relationship with Jesus Christ. Clap one time if that makes sense. Number three, are you teaching others the word? When you've been saved as long as some of you have, you should be sharing the gospel. Why? Because our assignment is to go ye to all the people, spreading the good news of the gospel to people. How many of you honestly feel comfortable sharing Jesus with your friends? I appreciate your honesty. Notice that it wasn't the majority of the room. It was just a few of you. Listen, that's okay. It's okay. That's why I'm teaching this message. You see, my job as a youth pastor is to edify you, build you up, make sure that you're prepared so when trouble does come, you know how to govern yourself accordingly. 
All right, so, all right, let's do this, okay. I heard what Pastor Ant said. I'm going to take it home. I'm going to study it. I'm going to meditate on it. And I'm going to put it in a daily practice. What happens as you keep doing that, Jalen? It's almost like you become a veteran at it now. You know what to do. You start growing up, baby. Yes, sir. You start growing up. It's like, man, let's get up in here, man. Let's get it. Oh, man, I'm growing up. Now, all of a sudden, because here's the thing. You'll be 22, 23, 24 years old, and those problems will intensify. But the problem is the spirit part of you is still a baby. You're still on milk. Your physical part eating steak and potatoes. Spiritual part of you still drinking milk. It's a problem. Because the Bible says, man should not live by bread alone, but by the word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Do you know that it just doesn't have to be the word that comes out of the mouth of God? It could be the word that comes out of the mouth of the enemy that you begin to eat off of and you begin to grow down instead of growing up. But the whole time you have this sense of I'm growing down. No, you've been deceived. You've been duped. You've been bamboozled. The enemy has finessed you. Why? Because he's a finesse. That's what he's supposed to do. But you know this, don't you? You know the, the devil's job is to do what? Steal, steal kill, and destroy. I said the devil's steal, job is to... Steal, kill, and destroy. One more time. Steal, kill, and destroy. One more time. Steal the killings and the destroyings. What is he trying to steal, kill, and destroy? The words you get. Try to make you doubt it. I want, I want you to, I want you, I, 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 the kid that got killed on that bridge over there by Atlantic Station. We had an officer who was first on the scene here. He serves here in team ministry. The mama's still a wreck. Still a wreck. Why? Do you not understand the love that a mother has for a child? The love that a father has for his child? Some of you may say no, because, well, Pastor Ann, my dad ain't in my life. My dad wasn't either. I get it. But once I invoked the Holy Spirit and started allowing the Holy Spirit to teach me, oh, I had a father. And then later on, about 13, 14 years old, God provided other means through mentors and uh, adoption and different things like that. That makes sense? Let's keep going. The fourth question. Are you fit for use by God? Are you fit for use by God? Lord, you can use me. Send me where you want me to go. A lot of times. What was that? That was me. Oh. I was going to be God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a lot of times. As a youth pastor, when you've been a youth pastor as long as I've been one, the question comes, hey man, what's next? And I usually tell people, stop asking me that. Why? Because I keep my head down and my face on my assignment. Why? Because I'm faithful. I do what God last told me to do. I'm not comparing myself against nobody. My only competition is yesterday's me. Does that make sense? Well, how did you get to that place? Maturing in the things of God. There was a time where it's like, man, this person over here had a conference. They had 20,000 people here, 20,000 teenagers in one building. How come we only got 900 at a conference? I used to be like that. But God had to walk with me and he had to show me. And now as a 41-year-old man, it don't even phase me no more. I don't care if it's 50 people at a doggone conference. By the way, we will be having the youth conference this year. 2023, it's going down yes, in the building. Sir. Lives will be changed. Souls will be saved. It's, it's going to be amazing. I'm super excited about it. I'm on a thousand. Uh, it's been a while. It's been about three years since we had a conference, Jay. About three, about three, three, four. About three four years since we had a conference. And Pastor Ann in conference mode is a whole nother monster, I'm trying to tell you. So it's, a, it's about to go up in a major, 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 major way. We're going to call it homecoming. I'm thinking about doing like a battle of the bands uh, type thing. I want to invite uh, Tri-Cities. I want to invite Westlake. I want to invite uh, North Clayton. I want to invite Banneker. I want all of those bands. We're going to do a drum line. All that stuff, the speakers. My mind's going crazy right now, so more information 
is to come, but are you fit for use? Do you know what it takes for God to use me and my wife and the rest of the staff to be able to impact a generation that doesn't feel like they need to be impacted? I tell people all the time, if you can preach to teenagers, you can preach to anybody. Because they're not going to give you the amens, the hallelujahs, the glory be to God's. That was a good word, minister. They're not going to do that. But it doesn't mean that you guys are incapable of learning the things of God. And it doesn't mean that you don't love God. You're just, just a little different. That's all. But we're going to work on that. We're going to add clarity. We're going to add balance. We're going to add love to it, acceptance to it. You ain't got to worry about the rest of, you know, well, man, sometimes, man, when we go over there to the dome, man, it feel like they be like this and they be like that. Hey, Constance and I will handle all that. We'll work with your parents and show them how to, you know, ease up off of the, the training a little bit and give you time to make mistakes and different things like that because sometimes you're only as good as the mistake that you've made. You learn through your experiences. And I think sometimes parents come in and they, they try to, uh, shelter you so much that you can't make mistakes and then by the time you turn grown you're doing a whole bunch of little boy little girl stuff because you was in prison most of you most of your childhood makes sense let's keep going so are you fit for use by God can God trust you can God trust you with his people what people, Pastor Ann? I don't have a congregation. You got people that you see every day in your school. You got people who sit right next to you in your first period class who are constantly cutting on themselves, constantly thinking about killing themselves, constantly trying to not think about the molestation that took place maybe weeks or months prior to that day. Some of the kids that come in your classroom got smiles on their face and act like everything is all good and they live in a very abusive home. I got some kids who are brought up in the adoption, um, in the foster families and different things like that and have been switched and switched and switched and switched. Seems like every year, every time they get used to a family, it's time to switch on or go to another one. Or they go to one family and that family has ulterior motives and different things like that. These are the kids that are sitting next to you. Can God trust you with his people? Or are you so consumed with yourself and what you have going on that you don't even hear his voice concerning the person next to you, let alone concerning you? Y'all might not clap, but clap one time if that makes sense. What does maturity look like? John 13, 34, New Living Translation. Let's go there. Everybody say love. Love. Say love. Love. Say love. 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 Talking about love. Love. John 13, 34. It says, so now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. It's based off how you love one another, not how you go into the basketball game and go up. Uh-uh, why you looking at me like that? Uh-uh, why she, uh-uh, 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 why she's looking at my boyfriend like that? Uh-uh, uh-uh, It's so aggravating. I got a headache like four times yesterday at the game. I'm like, oh my God, can we go to the adult section? And they'd be like, Pastor, ain't you a youth pastor? I am, but, you know, my, my teens are different. I just got to talk to them from the pulpit. But, Jesus, I'm surrounded by these little knuckleheads, and I, I'm hearing, I'm in their world, and it's like, they crazy. I heard so many different things yesterday. Surrounded, I was like, I'm sitting in the middle, close to the top, but because the game is so packed, because it's a rivalry game, all the teenagers are all around me, and all of them, Hey, boy, for real. Hey, boy, what buddy over there looking at? Boy, boy, for real. I'll strike this thing up right now, boy. I'll crash out on old boy, for real. On my mama, boy, I'll bust that boy outside the head, boy. On my mama, on my mama. Hey, twin, hey, twin, I got suspended, boy. I ain't even think they're going to let me in the game, boy, for real. And then I'm looking, I'm like, are these the type of boys that be trying to holler at my daughter? 
And I pray she got enough sense to not be attracted to that. And then I go, do my son talk to girls like that? <laughs> you know. Shane, you don't be talking like that, do you? Uh, huh? He said, what? You said, yep. Shane don't talk like that. I know he don't. Ain't no way. I know my son. He don't talk. Hey, twin. Hey, for real. I'm my mama. Hey, hey, hey. Boy, boy, oh, boy, on everything. Boy, strike up then. Strike up then. Strike up then. Like, what is happening right now? So are you doing that because it's the cool thing and it's entertaining? Or do you love people? How easy is it for you to love someone that bumped into you at a basketball game and don't say sorry? How many of you could do that? By show of hand, fellas. One, two, three, three, four. Anybody else? And I appreciate your honesty. Because I said, how many of you could be at a basketball game, somebody bump into you, don't say sorry, and you could still love them? <laughs> you could. I'm going to tell you, man, as a 41-year-old man, I did something the other day. We was headed to another game in Carrollton. I think it was me, my wife, and my daughter, right? So we going, and we pull up. We need to get gas before we got on the road because to get to Carrollton, you take a lot of back roads that are like super dark and nobody wants to get stuck back there. So I said, let's get some gas. So we go and get some gas. We pull up to the pump. The guys at the pump, all of the pumps are full, right? Everybody's trying to get gas. It's gas day, seems like, uh, in Noonan. So we're out there and the dude is sitting there and he's trying to sell cologne and jewelry at the pump. And I'm sitting there in the car and I'm like, is he getting gas? <laughs> And I'm like, Taylor, I'm looking at him, I'm like, what is he doing? Because by this time, we're sitting there for like five minutes. So I said, oh, heck no. I get out the car. I go, I say, hey, buddy, are you about to pump? Yeah, move up for me so I can get some gas. Then I get back in the car. As soon as I get back in the car, I said, dang. Constance said, what? I said, the Holy Spirit just checked me. She said, what happened? He said, why you go up there and make that man move that car like that? You're not the old you. You the new you. I said, you're right. And when I said it out loud, Riley was like, I was thinking the same thing because it's like, what if that dude had a gun or something like that? You know what I mean? It's like that. You can't just be going up to people like that and different things like that. And I got it. I got, I got the message. But I'm saying that and I'm sharing that with you to let you know, even as an adult male, the, the temptation still comes because, you know, uh, you're still man. You're still... Uh, uh, Christ-like doesn't mean soft-like. Does that make sense? It don't mean you're soft. It doesn't mean that you, 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 you know... Uh, you're fragile. Fragile. It doesn't mean that. Some of the strongest men, and you know, if you get on some of that milk, some of the strongest men are in the Bible. David, super strong. Moses, I know Jesus was small. They ain't, they ain't hey man, all listen, that life. Listen. He was carrying two oak trees. First of all, man, man beyond that, Living in a world and knowing the day you're going to die. Nah, yeah, that's tough. It don't get no tougher than that. You understand? So with how God checked you after you did that, how would you handle that situation better? Or how would you have handled it if you would have known, I mean, how to do it before I that? just would have sat there and waited or maybe went to another pump. Because mm. I never know. You never know. I may see that man again. And, I may, and the Holy Spirit may tell me to minister to him. And he'll remember, you that dude that tried to bully me at the... <laughs> you that dude that scared the heck out of me at the doggone quick trip, ain't you? Yeah, I remember you. I was out there trying to feed my family, selling this fake jewelry and this fake cologne, and, and you made me miss a sale, <laughs> you know? So if I do it over again, I just would have practiced patience. You feel what I'm saying? It's the details of your day. We keep looking for God with the big things, but... Your whole life is comprised of moments. Does that make sense? Every day is filled with 24 hours. 24 hours, each hour has 60. You got your phone on you? How many seconds is in the day? Hour in the day, okay. Huh. Let me see. How many seconds is in the day?
Somebody online going to give me the answer too. How many seconds in a day? 8,604. Okay, uh, 8,604. 8,604 seconds in a day. Your life is comprised of 8,000, 8,600. 80, 80, 8, there you go. That's how you said it. My bad. I'm about to say 8,600 don't sound right. 86,000 seconds are in a day. Your life is comprised of moments. When you look at that TV or you look at this screen, when you get close up on it, what will you see? Pixels. Pixels. And those little small dots of pixels, when they all come together, make what? A picture. A picture. Likewise, your life. You keep trying to involve God with the big things or the things that matter. And I'm here to tell you today, it all matters. You need him involved in the seconds of your day. Why? Because... It's the sum total of who you are. What you do with your time is the sum total of who you are. Who you choose to spend your time with is, is the sum total of who you will be. How could you just spend time with the friends and not spend time with the Lord? Well, how do I spend time with the Lord? I'm going to tell you again. How do I grow up? Study it, meditate on it, put it in a daily practice. Study it, meditate on it, put it in a daily practice. Why? Because we have this sound the alarm relationship with Jesus. And that relationship was never intended to be that way. It's not like a break the glass and pull the button type thing. Here I come to save the day. No, with Jesus, he is the day. He is the night. He is the comfort. He is the peace. He is the love. He is the joy. And we got to quit treating him like he's Superman. Will you call him in case of an emergency? Jesus is not 911. He's 411. What's 411? Y'all don't even know. Huh? The suicide line? No, Ain't boy. The, uh, it's the information like line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah, he enlightens you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. I need you guys to get this. That's why I wanted to make sure that I had that baby and that toddler and that mama up here so that you can physically see spiritual immaturity, emotional immaturity. Young people, it's time to grow up because if you're trying to get more trust from your parents, they're not picking on you or just trying to keep you from doing things. They see that you've physically grown up, but there's a lot of immaturity there that needs some addressing. So if you want a better relationship with your parents or your guardians, you may want to pay attention to the other two parts of you instead of just one third of you. One third of you is the, is the body. That's the part that you pay the most attention to. That's the part that we put it on. You dig what I'm saying? Ladies, you spend about 10, 15 minutes, right? Putting the lashes on, right? Okay. You get the toothbrush, you get the eco jet, you get the boop, 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 swoop, 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 to get the edges right, right? You put attention, time, detail into it. But why do you do that? Why do girls do that? Why do you do that? What do you say, baby? Huh? Because what? To get attention. Is that the only reason? Ladies, raise your hand if you agree with that. Raise your hand if you don't agree with that. So tell me why. Let's get the mics ready for them. Why do you put it on? Most girls put it on to make themselves feel good or to look good. Okay. To make themselves feel good or to look good. Okay, well, who else? I got to hear this. Who else? 
Anybody else? Somebody raise their hand over there? Who's that, Riley? What you got? Um, <laughs> I think it's, I think for me, it's really just like, cause that's how I, like, me personally, I like looking presentable. I don't like going places and not looking presentable to my standards. So I don't really do it for other people. So why do you do it? For me. For you? Yeah. But why? What about, what about, what are you looking from the lashes, the makeup, the edges? Well, I don't really do lashes and makeup, but I feel like for most girls who do is to feel confident. I could barely hear. Can we get her, can we get her uh, coming through these? Say that again? I don't do it, but I feel like for girls who do, it's for confidence. It makes them feel better about themselves. Okay. So confidence. You said you don't do it for confidence? No, I'm saying I don't do makeup. Like, I don't really do, like, foundation and stuff like that, so. Raise your hand if you agree with the ladies. Okay. Why do y'all put it on? Fellas, why do you put it on? Why you go get a haircut? Oh, I was going to say, I, I mean, whoever, if they put on lashes, I mean. You say what? I said, I was like, oh, I, was, I, thought, I thought we had some fellas that put on the lashes, too. <laughs> some of them do. What you got? I mean, you know, you get the haircuts to make sure fly you, you know what I'm saying? So it is a confidence thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you don't have a haircut, what's the dude, what's my man named? Spice Adams, I think his name is. You know, he do the uh, little uh, TikTok sort of Instagram things where when he uh, don't have a haircut, he be all... Sad, mopey, insecure, don't want to talk. He sit down in a barber chair. He's like, what type of haircut you want? He, perhaps you can give me a temple fade, you know? And then after he get the cut, he'd be like, <laughs> what's going on with you? You know, he got a whole new swag. So I get it. You know, you, you look good, you feel good, you know, and different things like that. But that's the body part of you. If you've got enough sense to put that attention into the body part, but neglect the soul part and then neglect the spirit part, it's going to be a problem every time. You understand? I just, I don't know how I did that, babe. We got to fix that, though. Um, it's going to be a problem every time. It's going to be hard. Life is going to be hard. Why? Because while one third of you is growing up, the rest of you, 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 you look like a, 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 a Wi-Fi signal. Doop, doop, oh. doop. <laughs> you feel me? You walk around here looking like a dog on Wi-Fi signal and, 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 and trying to engage in relationships and in things that require all of you be whole, all of you be mature. So when you go into these situations haphazardly, or when you go into these situations with just the physical part of you, oh, I'm 17 years old, okay? But mentally, you're six. Spiritually, you're like three months. But you're trying to get into a relationship with this young lady. What are you going to bring that young lady? Frustration. Heartache. Aggravation. Same thing with the ladies. What are you going to bring that young man? Frustration. You know, men, young men aren't hard to please. Long as they get to walk into a room with you and you fine and all their friends see that they walking with somebody fine. They have no intention on this being forever. Y'all teenagers. But for girls, they think it's forever, don't they? To the fellas, it's like, no, we just kicking it. We just, yeah, yeah, we, we, you my girl for right now. Some of you, not all of you. But that behavior comes when you've got that Wi-Fi type of mentality. When I say Wi-Fi, I'm talking about you know, the bar goes from small to a little taller to the big part. And it lets you, it represents how much Wi-Fi you got, right? So that behavior comes from, I'm physically grown, I'm physically older, but emotionally, I'm still a kid, and then spiritually, I'm still a baby. It's time to grow up. That's the reason why you've been experiencing so much frustration. It's time to grow up. It's time to have a real relationship with Jesus Christ. It's time to fully understand what that means. So what does maturity look like? It looks like love. 
You can tell who's his disciples by how you love one another. Not by how you talk about this person, talk about that person, talk about how this person put it on better than that person. And then you start comparing. And when you compare one of the two out of that you're comparing, you have to belittle one. And that's not love. You understand what I'm saying? But because it's so normalized, we move and we don't, we move and it's just involved in our 86,000 seconds. Is that what the number was? Past Constance, you got it? I, yeah, okay, that was it. it it's, it's involved in our 86,000 seconds in every day. You know, oh, well, today, what'd you do? Um, well, today, man, what was your conversations like? Not, not how was your day, and you say, oh, it was good, such and such, and you just do a highlight reel. I'm not talking about the highlight reel. The highlight reel don't win games or lose games. What wins games and lose games, if you're playing basketball, is your defense on this end and your offense on that end, being at an aggressive and accelerated rate the whole time. That's what wins games. But when you just want to take bits and pieces out and then involve God here and there, it's always going to be frustrating. It's always going to be trauma. It's always going to be drama. It's always going to be chaos. It's always going to be frustration. It's always going to be aggravation. It's always going to be isolation, depression, fear, hurt. All of those things are going to happen. Why? Because you keep trying to sprinkle God in when he's the main course. Somebody says it's time to eat meat. Say it's time to eat meat. Say it's time to eat meat. It's time to eat meat. It's not just hearing what you want to hear, but hearing what you need to hear. And what do you need to hear? The truth. The Bible says the truth shall set you free. And when you read that in context, if you look on the back of a, a pack of cigarettes, what is the warning that it puts on the back of cigarettes? What's the warning? And it's usually from, uh, what's it? Surgeons General says what? This product can cause, like, lung cancer? Say it again? This product can cause, like, lung cancer? So Surgeon General says that this pack that we made look so pretty and that we're giving to you can cause lung cancer. And you still see people... This is that walk that they do when they smoke in the cold. They go like this because they try to stay warm. But they see that it says this gives you cancer. They're not thinking about the 86,000 seconds in a day. They're thinking about how they feel right now, what they're going through right now, and how the cigarette makes them feel in that moment. And I'm telling you, man, you can't replace God's love, God's presence, God's security, God's wholeness for some cigarette. You can't replace it for this thing that I see on social media. You can't replace it for the love of likes. You can't replace it. You see, it'll give you a temporary satisfaction, but it's not everlasting. You see, when you drink from the well of God or when you drink from his word or when you drink from, from, what, from the cup that he has for you, it's, it quenches your thirst for real. You see, I could give, I gave people juice today. That won't really quench your thirst like water will. You know that, right? Why? It's too much sugar in it. And sugar naturally dehydrates you. How many of you knew that? How many of you knew that? It naturally dehydrates you. So if... if Man, I'm really thirsty. You're really dehydrated. But I'll take a Sprite. I'll take a juice. I'll take a, and it'll be wet. It'll be on your throat, but it's not good for you. Now, what if I had a bottle of water and I said, hey, man, who want this bottle of water? My man, would you have came up and gotten the water? You would have got the water too? If you had to choose between the water and the juice, which one would you have chosen? I appreciate you being honest. Why would you have chosen the juice? It tastes better, and that's the difference between milk and meat. Children don't want to try new things. You don't want the calamari. What do you want? Chicken, Chicken tenders. tenders and I want a Zaxx snack. I want those new fries that they have at Zaxby's. Has anybody tried those yet? Are they? 
I hadn't tried them yet, but I really want to. But I'm working on something. Pastor Ann trying to get rid of the belly for the conference. <laughs> oh, let's keep going. What is love? 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wrong. Whew. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth, everybody say the truth, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance, through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, everybody say grow up. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Keep going. Now we see things imperfectly like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely just as God now knows me completely. I need you guys to get this. It says three things that will last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Amen? Clap one time if that makes sense. I need you guys to get this stuff, man. I really do. I really do. Um, I'm going to close with this. Lord, give me the articulation. There's a part you play, and there's a part God plays. Okay? Your part is to be like duty. Right? The, the little boy who was playing soul today, that's duty. Your job is to be like duty. When his mom got up and walked away, what did he do? I want to go. He sat down because he had distractions in front of him, which is a good illustration as well. He had a lollipop in his mouth, chips in his hand. To a kid, man, he's in kid heaven. You understand? But he's still like, Ma, where you finna go? Because as soon as this pop, <laughs> this lollipop gone, and these chips gone, Oh, I'm going to act a fool up in here because I need my mama. How many of you, if you hadn't spent any time with God, feel that way? It's okay. I see one hand. It's okay. That's why I'm teaching on this so I can bring enlightenment to it. It's time for you guys to grow up, y'all. Like, straight up. It's time to grow up. Your parents don't trust you with certain things because, yeah, you're 18, you're 17, you're 16 and 15 and different things like that. But emotionally, you're very immature. you got a lot of immaturity about you. And I can't trust you that you're going to go to the movies and be good because even with me here, you're bad. <laughs> it's time to grow up. I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about maturing spiritually. You see, growing up just requires time, right? One year, two year, three year, four year, five year, six year, seven year, I'm 18, I'm 20, I'm 19. So growth only requires time, but maturity 
It requires involvement. It requires going through. I'd be a liar if I told you that as a believer, life is hunky-dory. That's a lie. Shoot, it's a lie to think that as a non-believer, life is hunky-dory. Life going to do what life going to do. But based off who you know, whew, when you know Jesus, it's not that you won't go through things, but you won't go through it like the world does. Because everything you do, when you know Jesus, he's doing it with you. I'm with you. Ladies, when you decide, I'm going to kiss him today, you and Jesus kissing that dude. I know it's weird thinking of it that way, but it's true. And guess what he ain't going to do? He ain't going to leave you because you kissed him. He's going to keep speaking. But what happens is, as he's speaking, so is your desire. So is your flesh. Your flesh, sometimes in the Bible when it says flesh, it's talking about your physical body, but another time it's talking about a way of thinking that goes against the word of God. Flesh. And sometimes, a lot of times, the flesh rises up and it makes you want to, I want that. Lord, I hear you. I hear you, Lord. But this girl bad, man. And just this one time, because we got grace, right? All of my past, present, and future sins have already been taken care of. I'm good. I got grace. I'm a... I'm going to take my chances with this. And that's when we tell you, hey, if, if you can't learn it from us, then life is going to teach you. If you can't learn it from your parents, then life is going to teach you. If the Holy Spirit can't teach you, then life is going to teach you. And your parents will still be there. The Holy Spirit will still be there with you. But now you're experiencing trauma on a level you should have never experienced it. Why? Because God is never going to put more on you than you can bear. But when you start trusting, relying, and depending on yourself, you're constantly saturated with things that are beyond your capacity to bear. Clap one time if that makes sense. I need y'all to go home and study this. I need you to go home and meditate on this. I need you to go home and take it to school, take it to work, take it on that bus. Take it in uh, when you're playing your video games and you're talking to people. I need you to get to a point where you're maturing the things of God, where you can lead people to Christ, where you can introduce people to Christ because you know him for yourself. Here is the plan. Submit yourself to God for him to do the work. That's his part. Your part is to acknowledge him and seek him. Before I make this decision, Lord, what do you want me to do? Before I respond to this situation, right? And there's a big difference between reacting and responding. Unbelievers like to come in and unbelievers like to uh, react to things. Immature believers react to things. But as you mature spiritually, you'll find yourself going from reacting to what? Responding. I used this example a, a few months ago. They don't call 911 first reactors, do they? Why? Can you imagine a doggone, you know, somebody just got shot or somebody just broke a leg or, ooh, we was, uh, I was uh, coaching a kickball team, right, Jay? And the lady was running. She was running in the home plate and she slid and her foot disconnected from her ankle. That's how it looked. So, as I'm trying to be the head coach and trying to keep my gag reflexes in, because I'm like, okay, okay. All right, let's calm the situation. Let's pray over it. Somebody call 911. Imagine if 911 came there and reacted. Let me show you what that looks like. Come here, Jay. <laughs> Lay down. But watch out for the link. I don't want you to get all that in your hair. All right. Uh, make your foot look funny. Give me the stanky foot. Now lay down in pain. I've fallen and I cannot get up. <laughs> all right. 
Here's the first, here's the first, here's the difference between a first reactor and a first responder. Here's the first reactor. What seems to be a problem? Ah, oh my God! Look at that foot! What am I gonna do? Oh my goodness! Oh! That hurt! Oh! It's disconnected from the what we gonna do? What we gonna do? What we gonna do? Who if did y'all call? Right. <laughs> if you just called 911 and they showed up like that, how you feel? Sad, because I'm I'm about to die! <laughs> who who made you? This is 911, right? Compared to a first responder. A first responder, this is the difference between reacting and responding. A first responder is going to come in. Okay, we've got a disconnected foot from an ankle. Okay, first thing we want to do is we want to stabilize it. So we're going to put the proper equipment on it. Everybody calm down. If you guys could give us some space. Their attitude brings a sense of peace. Why? Because their attitude and their confidence in their job assignment shows that they what? Know what they're doing. There's a difference between a reaction and a response. Immature Christians react. Mature Christians respond. What's the difference? One requires experience. One requires no experience at all. What's the qualifications to work here? What, what you got to have a high school diploma? Bro, you don't even need that. Shout out to twin, but for real, the job really gravy, but you don't even need no high school diploma, but all you need to do is, is, is count to 10 and say your ABC. You say what? I said, all you got to do, twin, is count to 10 and be able to say your ABC, but anybody can do the job, but how much they paying? By $12 an hour? $12 an hour? Yeah, by that gravy twin, but we finna ball out on them. That's not gravy. Baby, $12 an hour. If you, in school, you can only do what? 20 hours a week? What's that? What's that number real quick? $12, $12 times 20. Who? Who? $240 a week. So that's uh, every two weeks, that's $480. Every month, that's what? $960. $960 a doggone month, and I'm balling out. Yeah, but that's cool for a teenager. But, sir, you're 22 years old. <laughs> see the difference? I'm sorry, Jelly, you can get up off the floor, man. So, uh, you, see, you see the difference? The mindset has to change. Milk or meat? What you want to hear or what you need to hear? What you want to do or what you need to do? Babe, what we tell our kids? You do what you got to do so that you can do what you want to do. So when you come and ask, Dad, they got a party at such and such, I want to go. First thing I'm going to ask is, did you clean your room? I mean, it's clean. Is it clean towards your standards or towards my standards? Uh, I had a conversation uh, with my son, Answer, the other day. He's in the Navy, and he, he says, Dad, man, I appreciate you because I never would have been able to make it through boot camp or anything that I experienced here without you. I was prepared, and I appreciate you for that. And then he apologized for putting me through so much hell when I was trying to give him what he needed when he really desired what he what? Wanted. There's a difference. Because I gave him what he needed, when he went into that hellacious situation where people were getting kicked out left and right, people were getting sent home, people were getting all these different things, he was prepared. Why? Because I didn't give him what he wanted, I gave him what he needed. It's a difference. All right? Let's keep going. God is going to do the work. Philippians 1 and 6. Philippians 1 and 6. Let's put that up. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. That means you have from the day you accepted him until Jesus comes back that he's going to finish the work in you. You just got to stay out the way and let him finish it. How do I stay out the way, Pastor Ant? 
you quit trying to acknowledge all of these other voices and grow up. Kids want what they're used to. But as you're growing up, it's time to go from chicken fingers to calamari. It's time to go from, uh, you know, uh, just sippy cups to regular cups, to drinking out the bottle, not the baby bottle, but that bottle that he got over there, the big, the bottle that it came in. Why do we have to pour the juice out of the big bottle into sippy cups for babies? Why do we do that? Huh? Because what? So they, they can hold it and they don't, they don't make a what? Because they don't make a mess. That's why we have team ministry. So I could give you this stuff and you not make a mess. You dig? If you dig what I'm saying, say dig that. I need you guys to get this. It's time to grow up. Y'all not babies. Y'all not. Some of you, I think the youngest, uh, uh, we got ninth graders in here, so in ninth grade, you're what? 14, 15 years old, right? Is that correct? Ninth grade is usually 14, 15 years old? So the youngest I got in here is probably about 15, 14 years old. You're not little anymore. When you're in elementary school, you have cubbies. When you go to middle school, what do you have? Lockers. Lockers. And you have to learn, and, and I, I remember when I had to first learn how to do it, but you remember the first time you had to learn how to do the combination lock? And it took you more than the first time, more than the second time, and you had to get one of your homies to come and help you. It's like, okay, go, and then you skip past the left, and then you come back, and then you, and then, then boom, finally got it. Or then some of you, like me, man, I don't even need to lock a bump that. I ain't gonna be down there. Especially if they give me a bottom locker, because you, do they still do that to people who have yes. the bottom lockers? What am I talking about? Huh? You said what? You gotta squat down and open it, but back in my day, if you down there trying to get in your locker and I'm walking by, boom! Why ain't, you ain't gonna hit? You know. They don't still do that, do they? They don't? Y'all ain't pushing nobody in lockers? Good, good, good. It's a bad thing, horrible thing. Bully, what's wrong with you? Don't do that. It's crazy. It's funny, but it's crazy. Don't do that. God is gonna finish the work. God is going to finish the work. Immature people put a lot of pressure on themselves because they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, cast all of your worry, all of your care, all of your anxiety, all of your frustration, put all that on me for I care for you. Immaturity says, I got this. I'm going to figure it out on my own. It's the, it's the, it's the, I'm independent, and I'm declaring my independence. No longer will you tell me I have to not eat in my room. No longer will you tell me that I have to go to bed at a certain time. No longer will you tell me that my room has to be clean. Just for you to turn 25, get your own place, people come into your house, treat your stuff that you spent your $12 an hour on, <laughs> right? and treat it like crap, all of a sudden, dang, I sound just like my mom. I sound just like my dad. Time don't stop. People do. And today, I'm, I'm taking it off of pause. A lot of young people have just been pressing pause, but life has still been going, but you've been stopped. Stopped at this one issue that you just can't seem to get over. This message today gives you the solution to that. And yes, it is a process, but as with any process, you have to commit to the process. Most coaches, if you play for a team, they say what? Trust the process. Trust the process, why? Because the process is going to try you. Any sport, or athletics or comp competitive type of situation like track or uh, what do you call it when they tumble? Gymnastics, right? Like every cheerleader can't do them backflips, right? So yeah, you got two bottom, or three usually. 
you usually got two or three on the team that know how to like really crank that thing up when it's time out, right? When it's time out and it's a long time out, right? They like, oh, jump. This side, come and do it. Whoop, 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 whoop. She did five, but then you got this side. They doing the backflips from one side of the court to the other side of the court and then back, and then they come back like, right? Why did I just bring that up? Because they trust the process and now they can- Trust in the process. But athletics and all of these different things, they, they bring out character. They show you who you are. Everybody can't deal with a tough coach. Everybody can't deal with, I need you at practice, 6 a.m. in the morning, don't be late. If you're late, I'm gonna make you run. Why are you making us run? Because when you get in that doggone basketball court and that whistle blows and a tip-off happens, you're gonna get winded quick unless I condition you to being able to uh, operate under extreme circumstances now. That's all the Holy Spirit is trying to do with you. As soon as Jesus got baptized, I believe in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, it says, and the Spirit took Jesus into the wilderness. What was he doing? Training. It was training day. 40 days, 40 nights, no food, nothing to drink. And the enemy came and tried to tempt him with this, tried to tempt him with that. And remember this, you can't be tempted with something you don't think about. So what he was tempted with after fasting for 40 days was what was he tempted with? Food. You ain't finna go up to Jesus and, and tempt him with Jesus. Let me see. Do you like boys, Jesus? Got this beautiful boy here. You want a piece of that? Jesus is going to look at you like you're crazy. Why? Because you can't tempt him with something he ain't already thinking about. Now, he was human, so you best believe he was thinking about some food. Chicken, and I ain't ate in 40 days? What was his response? Man shall not live by bread alone. He was trusting the process. Satan was trying to get him to sway and move, just like he's trying to get you guys to sway and move. I need you guys to be able to not just know the word, but know the one who's speaking it. Know him. Know him for yourself. There's wisdom in him. What is wisdom? Wisdom is knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. How many of you have ever been in a situation where you're confused? Raise your hand. How many of you know God is not the author of confusion? That don't come from him. And if you knew that, when confusion comes, you'll return it back to sender. You understand what I'm saying to you? Give it back to him. Wait a minute, I'm confused. That don't come from my God. Let me send that back. Lord, I invoke your wisdom. Show me, lead me, guide me, direct me, order my steps, Lord. You understand? It's a difference. It's a difference. It's time to grow up, y'all. It's time to grow up. There's some things that's going to happen this year that's going to require your maturity. And that shouldn't put fear in your heart. It should put urgency in your heart. I got to get my stuff together. I'm a Christian. I need to read my Bible. Where do I start? In Genesis? Eh, I wouldn't advise it. Because the Bible was not written in chronological order, which means it starts with in the beginning, but it doesn't continue that way. It skips times and different things like that. So start with the scriptures that I give you. Try studying them out. Spend some time with them. And then when you don't understand just the piece that I gave you, read the whole chapter. It don't take long. Try it. Try to practice. Try to read a chapter a day. Okay? Well, well I don't know where to go. Well, Proverbs is the book of wisdom. You're going to get a lot of nuggets out of Proverbs. Trust me especially when it comes to your friends, when it comes to relationships. Proverbs is the truth, okay? Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, it's four different descriptions. It's the same story from four different points of views. You got it? Try reading a chapter a day. Learn who David was and how he moved. See, when David was chosen, he was a teenager, right? 
He was a wild kid. He had wild hair. If, if from the way the Bible describes David, he had hair like my man right here. Right? And he had older siblings. He had older brothers who were warriors and stout and big in stature. David was a little guy. Just out there, herding the sheep, playing the harp, playing on the little guitar. Ended up becoming one of the most powerful men in the Bible. Read your Bibles. Learn who these people are. Jesus. Man, every story about Jesus tells you something about you. Because if he can do it, you can do it. And the thing about it is God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So what God did back then for them, he has to do right now for who? For you. So I want to encourage you. Get you a physical Bible. Find you a Bible. I would prefer it be something parallel where you got the uh, King James Version and the Amplified Version because the Amplified Version breaks it down. But see, when I study, I got my iPad, I got my phone, I got my computer, and I got my Bible. Because I study, study. I'm not saying that you guys have to be there, but I am saying <sighs> when you use God like an emergency button, you're going to find yourself constantly in a bad situation. He's not, a, he's not a first responder. He is the response. He should be your response. God is love. And how we should be responding to people should be out of love, which is why he convicted me when I got back in the car. I was like, dang, I should have did that different. Dang. It's all good. I ain't going to beat myself up about it. I have another opportunity, and in that opportunity, I'll do it better problem with immature people is that they make a mistake and they stay at the mistake so long that they become the mistake. It's okay. Some of your parents, they may say, that's dumb. That's stupid. What they really mean is that's immature. You got to grow up. It's not that it's dumb. It's not that you're dumb. It's not that it's stupid. It's not that you're stupid. But you are immature. And I pray that during this, see, this series, your eyes are open to, you know what? <clears throat> it's time for me to grow up. Some of you had to grow up a lot quicker than others because of life situations. I know I was driving at 13, 14 years old, mainly because it was just me and my mom. And a lot of times, because of her hectic work schedule, there were things that she needed done that she couldn't call on anybody else. So she taught me how to drive and to drive up to Kroger. Kroger used to be on Godby Road back in the day. So because I lived on Godby Road, it was nothing for me to just drive straight up Kroger, get what was needed, and come right back. Well, of course, you know, I had to stop by Discount Mall on the way home because I'm 13. I'm in the chair, right? But I had to grow up. I had to do things. I had to cook for myself. Why? Because my mom worked the night shift. And at that time, with it just being me and her, and my father being in prison, getting locked up three days before I was born, I had to be a man a lot sooner than I really needed to be. And it was unfair. My kids didn't have to go through that. But... I'm saying that to say that I understand that some of you are in, I, I understand that it's different strokes for different folks, but every stroke needs Jesus. I don't care what color you are, what age you are, what your background is, or what your issue is. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. I wouldn't be able to raise my family or love my wife without him. Without him, and I tried it. It was horrible. Constant suffer. Where's, babe, where you at? Make some noise. Babe? Here she come. She back there. When we first got married, it was hell. Why? 
because I was trusting and relying and depending on myself. I was an idiot. I was immature. And I don't want her to come up here and say what else I was because I don't want to hear that. But I was. And even now, you know, when I look back on some of the things that I said, some of the things that I did, I'm like, man, I was bad. But I give God praise because I'm like, look how far you brought me. I changed the whole path of my family. My kids are well taken care of, healthy. Are they perfect? No, but I'm not looking for perfection. And none of your parents should be looking for perfection either. What I look for is progression. I want to see that, okay, yeah, you made that mistake, but did you learn from it? You did? Cool. Let's move on. Let's not stay there. Because if we stay there too long, what happens? You become the mistake. Now the mistake has infiltrated your identity. And you don't even know who you are anymore. It's a dangerous thing. So I think that's enough to put a pin in it. What you think? Yes, sir. What you think, man? Did you learn something? Yes, sir, I did. What would you say from somebody your age? What are you, 20? Don't, please don't, not yet, not yet. 19? <laughs> yes. You're 19 years old. So from a 19-year-old perspective, what did you get from this message? You got to work out every part of your being including your spirit, including your emotions, and including your physical body. If you just pay attention to one part, one part will starve and one part will be weaker than the other. So you have to give equal time, equal opportunities, and just take breaks to, or just different days to just focus on one part and yeah. then just keep going like that. Yeah, don't try to do it all at one time. Yeah, you'll stress don't yourself Don't try to out. do too much too fast. Just start off with a chapter a day. A chapter a day. I'm going to read a chapter a day. Mom, we need to go to a store. Why? I want to buy a Bible. I need a parallel Bible. How do you know what a parallel Bible is? She should not be asking you how you know what a parallel Bible is. You should already know it. Parallel Bible, y'all know what parallel means, right? Side by side. So in a parallel Bible, you have King James Version on one side and on that same page, Amplified Version. So you can read both at the same time if you need to. I want to encourage each and every one of you Go get you a physical Bible. I love the apps. I love the iPads and all that stuff. Cool, 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 cool. I use one right here. But please believe in my room on my desk is a Bible. And I pick that Bible up and I turn its pages, but I'm constantly reading the Word. Throughout the week, I've got the Word of God plugged into me like a doggone IV. I'm catching Sunday's message, Wednesday's message. I'm, I'm, I'm just, it's like plugged into my veins. I'm just sitting there loading up all week, all week, all week, all week, all week. Chaz will come into the office. Uh, hey, Pastor Ant, I'm doing the same thing I was doing two hours ago. I'm eating. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but from every word that comes out of the mouth of God. That's the only way the other parts of you eat. Does that make sense? I'm going to put a pin in it right there, and we'll uh, pick up with this uh, next week. We're going to be on this series for a minute because, one, that's what the Holy Spirit told me to do, but two, I trust him. If he's telling me to preach on this, it's for a doggone good reason. How many of you need to hear this? Raise your hand. I figured. I figured. It's time to grow up. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. I'm declaring intimacy in this year. Intimate relationships with Jesus Christ, with the one you serve, with the one you love, with the one you say you love, with the one you say you serve, with the one that you say you believe in. It's time to take your relationship with him to the next level. It's time to understand his ways. When you get to know Jesus, it helps you get to know yourself. And then when you get to that place, in that season and in that time is when it's time for you to start engaging in relationships because now you're bringing 
a sense of wholeness to a relationship. There's seasons for everything. And sometimes immaturity can have you moving out of season. That's all. It's not dumb. It's not stupid. It's just immature. It's time to grow up. Amen? If you're out there today and you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I need you to understand, just like I always say, if I take a tree out of the ground, what happens to the tree? It dies. If I take a fish out of the water, what happens to the fish? It dies. Well, if I take you out of God, you're separated from all of the provision, the blessings, the protection, the wisdom that he has for you. Amen? So if you're out there and you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, and you wish to do so today, the biggest decision that you'll ever make as a human being is to accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. After that, after you become a believer, the biggest decision that you can make daily is to commit to a life of renewing your mind. What does renewing your mind mean? It means I'm eating his food, every word that proceedeth out of his mouth. Written word and rhema word. What is rhema word, Pastor Ant? That's when you hear God's voice directly. How do I know it's his voice? Because it's always going to match what's in his word. Well, how do I know it's in the word? You got you to you you read it. <laughs> so if you're out there and you hadn't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, all you have to do is confess with your mouth. Here's the, here's the, here's the tricky part. Really believe in your heart. Okay? So if you're ready to do that, then repeat after me. Say, Father God, I admit that I am a sinner. Come into my life. Be my God. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I surrender my body, soul, and spirit to you. Make me new. Make me like you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you just said that prayer, then we want to make some noise for you. Welcome to the body of Christ. We have a gift for you. If you just said that prayer, we want you to text, I'm saved, one word, to 51555. And we have a digital download that we want to put into your hands. It'll, us, it'll text you back a digital download that'll start the process of discipleship. Amen? Did you guys learn something today? If you learned something, make some noise. Praise God. Praise God. While we got a little bit of time, I'd like to hear what you learn. Because in 2023, I'm holding you accountable for what I teach you. So, who in here can share with me what they got from this message today? Anyone without the last name Adams? Huh? Come on. She said, my last name ain't Adam. My last name for the chain. Okay. Um, so I just learned that, like, development is really important. Um, like, last week, Pastor Dollar was talking about, like, the state and the stance of the believer, like how, like, one's already set in motion and then one, like, you're constantly working out. So I think that parallels, like, to this message, how it's like, yeah, like, as a believer, you're already set in motion, like, as righteous, as holy, but developing and like eating meat which is the word is how you grow into that wow wow y'all make some noise for that <laughs> who else learned something let me hear what you got come on nick you got a mic back here who else after nick all right uh one thing that, well one thing i learned is um you have to prioritize a relationship with God, and you can't play church no more because this is life. And when life really hits you, that's when you really look, okay, I really need this, and I really need this relationship, and yeah. I really need to depend on this. And one brick at a time builds a house. Mm. So you can't build a house in one day, but you got to build it, though. You got to start the foundation. 
Well, and you preaching, boy. Even with just one brick at a time, that's just like one chapter at a time. Yeah. It's a brick, and it's, it's going to add up. Nick, how old are you? I'm 19. 19 years old. After you graduated, did life get a little harder? Oh, what? Talk it got hard it. for me when I was in high school. I was just Come talking on. about this on my YouTube channel, how when I was... And what's your YouTube channel? One Nico, one N-I-C-O. One Nico. Mm -hmm. Y'all make sure y'all go follow him. He got good but stuff on there. I had, um, was talking about how when I was a junior and senior in high school, I went through depression, and I wanted to take myself out with my own gun mm. at the time. So, you know, after I graduated, I'm like, dang, this is what they're talking about. This is life. And now that I realize that God is something you have to depend on, like, my dad, when, whenever he's like, okay, well, I don't mean to get too personal, but he'll pray in tongues in the shower and spend time with God when he's in the shower, and I just hear him. I'm like, what is he doing? And now I do it, and I be like, how did I get here? And that, right. it just, it took time. I love it. But at 19, are you pretty convinced God is real? Oh, of course. Yeah, without a doubt. That makes a noise for that. Come on up here. We got one up here. Kings are right here, up, up front. Who's after him? Raise your hand. Going once, going twice. Anybody else? Go ahead. All right, so I learned that, like, when life starts to, like, come down on you once you get older, that you need to mature and build a strong relationship with God because, like, you're going through phases. Like, you compared it to, like, the baby and to, to a toddler and to a grown-up. You, you start off as a little kid, you know what I'm saying? You get milk. But once you start to get older, you get meat. You start to get, you know what I'm saying? Learn the word, and you start to get mentally and physically strong and start building a better relationship. Yeah. Do you feel like you still need milk? Honestly, I just feel like I should do better, but I wouldn't say that. Why? Because like, it's embarrassing to say it? Some way. Don't let it be embarrassing, guys. If you need milk right now, you need milk. Start the process of growing up. How do you grow up? You study it, meditate on it, and put it in a daily practice. What does that equal? I'm in the process of growing up. So you got some people that don't even know how to locate or even understand the difference between milk and meat. So you're already ahead of the game because you've located yourself. Remember I used the example of the map on the board? If I have a map and I have a destination on that map, that map is pointless. It's useless unless you can what? Say it, say it in the mic. Unless you can find out where you at. Unless you can locate yourself on that map. Where usually like if you go to uh, Six Flags, it says you are here, right? So if you know you're here and you can see where you're trying to go, now that map is effective. Well, likewise, some of you just need to locate where you are right now. You are on milk. Where you're trying to go is filet mignon. So because I know where I am, Pastor Anthony gave me the steps, gave me the tools, gave me the wisdom that I need. I'm going to study it, meditate on it, and I'm going to put it into practice daily. Amen? Amen? All right, I ain't gonna keep preaching. Um, is somebody supposed to come after me? Yes. All right, so I'm done. Um, you gonna pray over them when you're done? You gonna pray over them when you're done? All right, cool. Love y'all. See y'all afterwards. Get y'all some pizza and all that good stuff. Peace. Hello, beautiful now what you guys give universe. It is Glory, and I am here with offering for you guys today. Now, personally, I got testimony because, like, for the last like few months or so, I've been doing this program called GHP, and it stands for Governor's Honors Program, and it's basically like you, your teacher nominates you for a subject, and you then have to compete with a bunch of other people in that subject. And if you make it all the way to the state level, then you get to go to Georgia State for the summer, and you get to learn more about said subject. So I got nominated for English, and I have made it all the way to the state level so this is the last round guys pray that i make it to pass it 
but I'm just so grateful for all that God has done for me, especially concerning GHP. Because honestly, I was the only sophomore that was nominated and made it this far. So I'm really excited and I'm so grateful to God for this moment. So, and that's exactly what offering is, just being grateful and showing appreciation for what he has done for you. So think about that. And then if you want to give, you can text WCYE team plus your amount to 74483. Should be down. So go give guys and be grateful and stay blessed and stay growing and stay glowing. I love you. Goodbye. Hi everyone, I'm Fazwa and I hope you guys enjoyed what Pastor Ant had to say today. I hope it spoke to you. I hope you can use it in your life and I hope you have a great Sunday and I'll see you next Sunday. WCY, WCY, world changes, world changes. Hey, this is Pastor Lissuaro, the pastor with the blue hair because I really do care. Listen, you have probably just watched an amazing service for senior high. Well, listen, high schoolers, you're in the right place. Middle schoolers, we want to make sure that you get to the right place on WCYE Junior High Studios, where we have a service designed especially for you. So we'll see you there next week. World Changers Youth Experience is the team ministry for World Changers Church International, and we are looking for volunteers with a creative mindset. If you are creative skilled in areas such as camera operating, video editing, producing rundowns and special services, operating in the media control room, being a praise team director, graphic design, social media, photography, or any other creative area you can think of to enhance the ministry, we want to meet you. All you have to do is text SERVE, W-C-Y-E, all one word, to 51555. If this sounds like an area you're interested in, let's get connected.